Are you dreading an upcoming long haul flight? Honestly, the thought of being confined to a cramped seat sandwiched between strangers for hours on end can feel suffocating. But fear not because in this video, I'm gonna give you several easy tips to transform those dreaded long haul flights into a more enjoyable experience, even if you're seated in economy. Now this is an action packed video and I'm gonna quickly break down several tips from what to wear, what to bring with you, how to pass the time and even how to get quality sleep. But first, there's one thing you can do to make your flight way more comfortable and you can do it before you even leave for the airport. Choose a great seat. If you're nervous about being uncomfortable on your long flight, this is one thing that you can do to exert a little control over your situation. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to be stuck in the middle seat for 12 hours, nobody. Maybe you're a window seat person. Uh, the window gives you something to lean against and a nice place to rest your head. Personally, I like the aisle seat and on a long haul flight in economy, it can be nice to have one of the aisle seats in the middle section for a couple of reasons. First, it gives you quick access to get out of your row, which is true of any aisle seat, right? But secondly, it gives the other people in your row a different way out than just where you're sitting. For example, if you're asleep and someone in your row has to go to the bathroom, there's a good chance that they could go the other way without having to wake you up. When picking your seat for a long flight, consider using seat review websites to look up your specific plane to see the best and worst seats, as well as in-flight amenities and user submitted reviews. For years, I used a site called Seat Guru to look at all of this, but it's not really being kept up to date. So a good alternative is seatmaps.com. This has helped me avoid problem seats that wouldn't have been obvious when selecting on the airline site. And trust me, it can be a lifesaver. A couple of quick tips from someone who has taken countless long flights. Even a few extra inches of legroom can be beneficial, especially if you're tall, it could seriously be worth it to spring for economy plus. Exit rows sound nice, but a lot of times the tray tables and the screens are the ones that flip out from the armrest, which is a bit of a nuisance, and they're usually the coldest rows, no question. Speaking of staying warm, let's talk about what to wear. On a long flight, you want to be comfortable. You're in a tiny seat for a long time. You already got to sit up straight, most likely. So wear something that's going to make life more cozy. I'm not usually a sweatpants in public kind of person. But a long flight is the one place that I might swap the jeans for a pair of joggers or something like that. For me, that also means managing temperature swings. They can get really cold in the air, but there's also that moment where the plane is like blazing hot before takeoff. For this reason, I always recommend dressing in layers. If you get hot, you can remove a layer. If you get cold, you get it. I'm cold natured, so I always have a light jacket or hoodie with me, even in the summer. And this comes in really handy on the plane because it doubles as a pillow if needed. For a base layer, I like to wear merino wool because its natural properties help with those temperature swings. Keeps you warm when it's cold, cool when it's warm. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Another benefit of merino is it's naturally moisture wicking and odor resistant, which you might need if it's been a long travel day. Merino wool isn't the cheapest thing out there, okay? But this is one of those areas where I feel you get what you pay for. If you travel a lot, if you carry on a lot, even one or two pieces of merino wool clothing can up your comfort and reduce the amount you have to pack. At least that's my take. My company of choice for the past several years is Unbound Merino, which makes products specifically for travelers. And if you hit the link in the description below, you'll get 10% off Unbound Merino when you use the code away together. Big thanks to Unbound Merino for sponsoring this video. For long flights, I also recommend compression socks. When you're stuck in a cramped space for an extended period, like during a long flight, your leg veins struggle to pump blood back up to your heart because you're not moving around. This can cause swelling in your legs and can even lead to blood clots. Compression socks can help reduce that risk. Other ways to avoid that risk is if you're able to get up and move around every so often. Don't be that person that's hovering over someone else's seat or just hanging out in the galley, but if permitted, try to get up and take a short walk a couple times during the flight. Okay, somebody watching this right now is that hardcore person who will have no problem sitting still for 12 straight hours, doesn't need anything to be more comfortable, won't sleep, won't watch any TV, and will just sit in silence. I salute you. I am not that person. I wish I were, but I've learned that there are certain things that can just make this long flight experience better. Some things that you'll want to bring with you on the plane. And before I tell you what those are, it's important to choose a bag that will give you quick access to essential items. There's a million bag options out there. I'm not saying these are the only ones. These are just ones that I've enjoyed. 
If you're a one bag traveler carrying on and you've chosen a backpack as your main bag, I'm a huge fan of the Peak Design 45 liter backpack, which has all kinds of compartments and quick access pockets for convenient yet secure storage. Or consider something like the Porter 46 from Osprey. This was actually my first ever backpack. And one thing I still love about it is this quick access pocket up at the top to make it easy to empty your pockets into. If you're checking a bag, don't forget you're allowed a personal item like a small backpack. And we linked some of our favorites below. Another idea is a pouch like this tech pouch, which works great with the bag that I showed you a second ago, or a small sling or fanny pack. We've reviewed all these items in other videos before, and I'll link those below as well. The important thing is you can quickly access what you've brought. And the benefit of a pouch or a sling is that your bag can be in the overhead bin, but you could bring this smaller item to your seat with you without taking too much space. All right, here are some essentials that you'll want handy. Your toothbrush and toothpaste. You're bringing it anyways, I hope, but just keep it accessible. I always brush after dinner and before I land. Easy peasy. Next, I've found that being able to wash my face or even just kind of wipe down with a moist wipe of some kind, like a degree body wipe, helps me feel fresh. If the long flight is after a full day of travel, I might do this before bed, or I may just do it before we land in the morning, but it's nice to have the option to just sort of freshen up. Airplanes are dry. They're typically very low humidity, so you wanna bring things for a dry environment if that bothers you. Lotion, chapstick, eye drops, stuff like that. You're also gonna become dehydrated faster. So make sure you're properly hydrated leading up to your flight and drinking water during the flight. I always travel with a refillable water bottle and a lot of airports these days have a place for you to fill it up after you get past security. Just don't be like me and forget that there's water in your bottle and have to chug it in the security line. Before a big flight, I also tend to buy a big bottle of water in the airport. That way I've got plenty of reserves and I don't have to keep getting refills on the plane one cup at a time from the flight crew. In terms of what else to eat and drink on your flight, remember alcohol dehydrates you and it can reduce your sleep quality, both of which will make your jet lag worse. So even though I'm no teetotaler, I tend to skip booze on a long flight. However, I do tend to eat anything they put in front of me. And plain food is like, is it good? Is it bad? I've had some amazing meals on planes. I've also had some meals that weren't great. So for that reason, I also tend to bring some snacks or other food options. If you're a picky eater, if you've got food allergies, could be a good idea to bring some extra food with you. Even in a terrible seat and even in a situation where I can't seem to fall asleep, I love flying and I love long flights. And one of the main reasons is the stretch of uninterrupted time where I can just focus on something. So take it from me, you wanna bring something to keep yourself occupied. My number one long flight essential is a good set of noise canceling headphones. I like a good set of in-ears like AirPods or some over-ears like these Sonys. Most plane seats these days have personal screens with large libraries of movies and TV shows. And so if you're bringing your own headphones, make sure to bring the cable so that you can plug into the plane's entertainment system or a device like this Mi Audio, which is a Bluetooth receiver that allows you to connect your Bluetooth headphones to basically anything you want. Because not all planes have those screens, or because sometimes even if the plane does have them, you're in a seat where it doesn't work, it's a good idea to download some movies or shows beforehand in the app of whatever streaming service you use. You'll also want something to keep your phone charged. Most planes these days do have USB outlets. Some even have AC power. Just be advised, I've not seen USB-C in a lot of places yet. So bring a USB cable or a battery bank. I'd also recommend bringing a small mobile tripod or stand so you could prop your phone up on the tray table. This battery bank by Anchor actually does both of those things. It wirelessly charges your phone and it props it up so you can go hands-free and you don't have to crane your neck. If you're a reader, this is the place that you'll want a good book, your Kindle, or the Kindle app on your phone. All right, let's talk about sleep. Sleeping on a long flight can be tough, but there's a few things you can do. First, bring an eye mask to block out any light. I always travel with one. Second, and this isn't medical advice, but you could consider taking a non-habit forming sleep aid like melatonin. I think neck pillows are a complete waste of space, at least the big thick ones that you can get from the airport gift shop. And I personally don't travel with them, but I know people swear by them, some people need them. So I wanna point you towards inflatable neck pillows because those pack essentially flat 
when they aren't in use. To lessen the effects of jet lag, I pretend it's whatever time it is at my destination from the moment I step on the plane, and that directs all of my in-flight behaviors, including when or when not to consume caffeine. Honestly, the best sleep you can get on a plane is when you can lay down. It's just so hard to get quality sleep sitting up straight. A couple of times we have lucked out, and even though we bought economy tickets, had situations where there were seats near us available, and we were able to lay down and get great sleep that way. Some airlines have even begun selling tickets where you could buy out a whole row for a bundle price. It wouldn't be nearly as much as business class. I kind of wonder if this is gonna become more common. Now the ultimate is flying business or first class. It's truly unrivaled, except of course for the price. Those tickets can cost thousands upon thousands of dollars. I love flying business class, but I cannot stomach paying cash for a flight like that. If you want to know how we fly business class for basically free, check out this video. And if you're interested in an in-depth guide on beating jet lag, including tips like what to do after you arrive, check out this one. Thank you so much for watching. Happy travels.